We are starting with section 16.1, which is on Bronsted acids and bases. This is something that we did cover in 161, but we haven't used it. We didn't use it at all in 162, so it's a good chance that you forgot about Bronsted acids and bases. So we're going to start by redefining them. And if you're looking at other resources, you might see these called Bronsted-Lowry acids and Bronsted-Lowry bases. And Bronsted versus Bronsted-Lowry, it's the same thing. So Bronsted acids are defined as molecules, or they could be ions, that donate an H plus positively charged hydrogen, which we are going to call a proton. H plus nickname is the proton. And a Bronsted base is a molecule that accepts the H plus or the proton. So the acids are proton donors and the bases are the proton acceptors. In order to classify a molecule as either an acid or a base, we really need to see the molecule in a chemical reaction like HNO3 plus H2O. When they react together, they make NO3 minus and H3O plus. And so if we wanted to classify our reactants, HNO3 and H2O, if we wanted to classify them as either an acid or a base, we really need to look at what they're doing in this chemical reaction. So this is where we say we're going to start with HNO3. We'll classify that guy first. And we ask ourselves, what happened to HNO3 in this chemical reaction? What did it turn itself into? Looking over at the right side, HNO3 most closely resembles NO3 minus. So that means our HNO3 turned into NO3 minus. And we'll do the same for water, H2O. What did water turn into? So we're going to look over to the right side of the reaction. Water turned into H3O plus. So once we've decided that the HNO3 has turned into NO3 minus and H2O has turned into H3O plus, now we ask ourselves, how did that happen? Um, how did HNO3 become NO3 minus? And we can see that HNO3 lost a hydrogen and it also lost a positive charge because it went from being neutral to having a charge of negative one. For water, we can see that water picked up a hydrogen. It went from two hydrogens to three hydrogens, so that means it gained a hydrogen. And it also gained a positive charge. It went from neutral to positively charged. Because HNO3 lost a hydrogen, or it donated a hydrogen, it is our acid. And because water gained up, gained or accepted or picked up a hydrogen, it is our base. So it's as simple as that. Let's do another example. NH4 plus plus H2O making NH3 and H3O plus. And we're going to classify NH4 plus and H2O as acid or base. You want to start by asking yourself for NH4+, what did it turn into? Look over at the right side of the chemical reaction. NH4+, most closely matches NH3, so that's what it turned into. In water, what did it turn into? Look over to the right side. Water most closely matches H3O+. And when I'm talking about most closely matches, I'm just looking at the atoms, NH4 plus versus NH3. 
that's really similar, H2O versus H3O plus, really similar. So once we've matched up one reactant with one product, then we're gonna ask ourselves, how did that transformation take place? How did NH4 plus become NH3? We can see that it, um, NH4 plus lost a hydrogen and it lost a positive charge. H2O, we can see it gained a hydrogen and it gained a positive charge. The thing that loses the hydrogen is our base. Nope, it's our acid. And the thing that gains hydrogen is our base. We're gonna do one more. H2CO3 plus H2O makes HCO3 minus and H3O plus. Start by finding the product and the reactant pairs. H2CO3, what does it look the most like? H2CO3 versus HCO3 or H3O? H2CO3 and HCO3 minus, they have the most in common. H2O and H3O plus, they match up. Again, we're just looking for pairs that are very similar. How did H2CO3 become HCO3 minus? It lost a hydrogen and it lost a positive charge. H2O gained a hydrogen and a positive charge. The thing that loses the hydrogen is the acid. The one that gains the hydrogen is the base. Acids can also be classified based on how many hydrogens they have. A monoprotic acid is an acid that has one H plus that it can donate. And we can usually tell an acid this monoprotic just by looking at its formula, like HNO3 only has one hydrogen. HCl only has one hydrogen. HBr only has one hydrogen to donate. Some of them are a little bit trickier. Water, if it acts as an acid, it actually only has the ability to donate one of its hydrogens. Another one that we'll see a lot is CH3COOH. Um, again, only one of the hydrogens in these molecules can be donated. Some acids have more than one hydrogen that they can donate. If they have two, we call it a diprotic acid. Diprotic acid has two hydrogens that it can donate. And these molecules have a formula that typically starts with an H2, like H2CO3 or H2SO4. The only exception to that is going to be water, not H2O, because again, water is monoprotic. It can only get rid of one of its hydrogens. And then last but not least, we do have some acids that are triprotic, which would mean, as you can imagine, that they are going to have three hydrogens to donate. And there aren't as many of these guys, um, but the most common example is H3PO4. For diprotic and triprotic acids, the hydrogens only come off one at a time. So this means for the most part that, let's use um, H2SO4 as our example. H2SO4 reacting with water, we'll use that as our example. 
the first thing that happens is that all of the H2SO4 molecules lose one of their hydrogens. And once they have all lost one hydrogen, then the HSO4 minuses can lose hydrogen number two. And it's the same is going to be true for triprotics. They will lose one, and then they'll lose the second one, and then they'll lose the third one.